All right, so I'm just recording this. That's and okay. You were asking about what? Well, the only one question I had is, you know, what what do I if I go to mass in the morning? What am the first uh, question I had is, what am I believing? Just um, uh, uh, am I am I or am I putting myself in a state of um, sin, so to speak, to to, be, to uh, believe in anything of this counter church? Yes, to accept it and to go to this mass would be sinful because it's not even a mass. It's nothing more than a Protestant service. It was invented with the help of Protestants. It was brought in in the 60s in order to Protestantize the liturgy. And they've changed the words of consecration. And by changing that. Yeah, by changing the words of consecration, they invalidate the sacrament. And that's covered in the material on our website, and we have a whole video about that. Wow. So you can't go there, not for any reason, never. And the evidence is strong that it's not only an invalid service, definitely that, but that it's the abomination of desolation prophesied in Matthew twenty four fifteen that will be in the holy place at the end of the world, and it will cause a massive deception. Wow. So as I was saying earlier, you're not only dealing with anti-popes, but you're dealing with Antichrist. You're dealing with the most wicked men in church history. And, and John, John Paul, who, uh, from a canonization standpoint, and he, did he? Did, did, uh, I'm sure you you validated some of the things that he's written about him, in terms of what he thinks or he was what he has written. I, I don't understand your question. Well, it can it can be valid. Uh, I forget exactly what you said and some of the things that he had written to uh, John Paul. Oh, John Paul? Yeah, he denied everything. Taught universal salvation, taught that every man is Jesus Christ. He taught that non-Catholics may lawfully receive Holy Communion. He taught the heresy of religious liberty. He taught that the Old Covenant is valid. He taught that Protestants don't need conversion. He taught that the Eastern Schismatics are part of the Church. He gave a donation to a schismatic church. He prayed with the Jews for the coming of the, quote, Messiah. Went into a Buddhist temple and bowed in front of a statue of Buddha. He threw cu cucumber peelings in front of pagans. He prayed with African animists. I mean, we could go on and on and on. The guy was almost unbelievable in his apostasy. And Benedict the Sixteenth, he is as heretical in writing. In terms of his written heresies, he's even more diverse. John Paul II committed more acts of apostasy and taught the man as God heresy. But Bank the Sixteenth, I mean, he's denied basically every major dogma you could name. I mean, the Council of Trent, uh, Vatican I, he teaches that schismatics are part of the church. He praises the ministry of schismatics. He just prayed in Our Father with a Jewish rabbi a few weeks ago, and on and on and on. Well, yeah, you shouldn't say my God that way unless you're invoking God or praying to God or speaking about God, but as an interjection or a reaction, one shouldn't say it that way. Well, uh, Father, my, I had you on speaker with my wife, and this is my wife Mary. Where did you receive your education, and what do you... Uh, who was the last good pope, I suppose, I'd like to ask? Well, we do our study here. But as far as the the real question is, who was the last valid pope? Valid. And, the, and the last valid pope was Pope Pius XII. Oh, God bless you, yes. All, all of the Vatican II, quote, popes, are anti-popes. That's John the Twenty Third, Paul the Sixth, John Paul I, John Paul II, and Benedict the Sixteenth. Oh, wow. This is really, really... And you'll see the information if you watch... Do you, do you have uh, the internet? Uh, yes, I was on your website. That's how I got got to you. Okay. Well, you should watch those videos, and I'd encourage getting our special, our five dollars special. If you watch that video, the third secret of Fatima, the imposter sister Lucia, and the end of the world. If you watch that all the way through, yes. that covers really what has occurred. It deals with the message of Fatima. It deals with the events that led up to Vatican II, Vatican II, the changes to the Mass, 
and on and on, all the heresies of the anti-popes, what the church teaches, it really gives you the full picture of what has occurred. If I, a question just jumped into my mind, if I were to ask any priest or bishop or uh, that I might know, like at, at our parish, and ask him what he thinks of, of the, the points of view, the truth as you are, Exposing, uh, what would he? How would he address what he thinks of what you're doing? He would reject it, and he would say that it's not in line with the church. And he might say something along the lines of, "There's a development of doctrine," or "That's not a proper interpretation." But the fact of the matter is, if he debated with us, it, he'd be completely destroyed. And it would be shown that what he adheres to is a false version of Catholicism that is not at all consistent with what Catholics have believed throughout history and what the Church has always taught. The faith doesn't change. The faith is handed down. It was revealed by God. And when the popes would teach a doctrine throughout history, they were simply setting forth what Christ has revealed. And that was done consistently in the magisterial pronouncements throughout the Church's 2,000-year history. But at Vatican II, you have all these new teachings, new teachings on non-Christian religions, new teachings on how the Church is constituted, new teachings on whether people who reject the papacy and a, quote, pope are inside the Church, new teachings on whether you can worship with people who are outside the Church, and on and on and on. And so these are new ideas that are contrary to what the Church has always taught. And this whole situation, as I was saying earlier, was predicted to happen. When I think of the volume of people, uh, Catholics around the world, uh, I, I, I guess I'm confused. Where, where do they turn to? Do they do? How, how will people be, can we possibly be converted or turn things around. Well, things are not going to be turned around. You're living, the evidence is overwhelming, near the end of the world, and that you're living through the great apostasy. And Jesus says in Luke 18.8, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on earth? If you are saved, normally speaking, Jesus says that in Matthew 7.13, but that's even more true at the end of the world. And so the church still exists. It exists in a remnant of traditional Catholics who hold what the church has always taught. And so, Is this an activity of the devil who has tried to turn, to help turn things around? Is what has occurred since Vatican II an activity of the devil? Is that your, yeah, but definitely. There's no doubt about it. And But it's not as if there's nowhere to turn. You turn to the traditional Catholic faith and you practice the faith as it has always been practiced and you believe it as it has always been believed and the material we have on our website communicates how one does that. There's actually a traditional profession of faith which we recommend people to make but that's once you're convinced on the issues. But you stop going to the new mass, you recognize that this Vatican II church is not Catholic, you pray the rosary, you accept all the traditional dogmas of the faith you try to learn more about your faith, and you live it day in and day out. And once a person is convinced, we can direct that individual to where to receive valid sacraments, but first you'd have to be committed on these issues. Wow, you've given me so much to digest. I will read more and look further at everything. I'm so anxious to know more, and so is my wife and my family. I'm sure they will be. Okay, yeah. I'm glad I called you. Well, I'm, I'm glad you found the material, and you, you're familiar with Nancy Pelosi, right? Oh, uh, yes. Um, yes, I am. She's a pro-abortion. Did you know she claims to be Catholic? Yes, I do. Was I she, know that. Yeah. I, I question that myself. How can she, how can she condone what is just the opposite of what we believe, I thought? Yeah, and so that's an example of someone who makes the claim to be Catholic, but because she does not adhere to what the Church has always taught, She's not a Catholic. She's no more a Catholic than the Dalai Lama. Right, right. And so that principle applies not only to uh, liberal politicians, it applies to priests, it applies to bishops, and it applies to a man who claims to be the Pope. If he's a heretic, 
he's actually not the Pope. He's outside the Church and therefore can't hold authority in the Church. And so that's covered in the material. And as you watch more of it and look it over, I think you'll see that it's well documented. Um, uh, brother, are you uh, are you familiar with this new show on television? This Father Albert, uh, former uh, oh Father Albert QTA. Yeah, I've never seen his show, but I heard about the fact that he left the Novus Ordo quote priesthood right. and became an Anglican. No, he didn't say that. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say that. But he, 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 he put, put himself on the hot seat. Uh, and there are, uh, it seemed to me that we watched the show, most of it, and it seemed to me that the people there were um, very divided and one girl, one girl that personally challenged him that was in his parish, I thought she held her ground very, very well. Well, he's he's just a totally wicked apostate, and obviously he is is a liberal who moved into. He does claim to be an Episcopalian or Anglican, right? Yes. Buddy. Yeah, and so he moved into that denomination because it would allow him to have his. Yeah. his wife but the bottom line is that it really makes no difference if you accept the theology of the Vatican II Church whether you're an Anglican or whether you claim to be Catholic because the Vatican II Church teaches that the Anglicans are part of the body of Christ uh. and it also teaches that they can be saved in their religion wow. so according to John Paul II and Benedict XVI he could be saved as an Anglican so it really makes no difference that's why the theology is so heretical. Oh my God. Vatican II taught that Protestant religions are a means of salvation. Is, uh, um, you, are you Brother Michael or Brother... Brother Peter. Brother Peter. Um, and uh, are, have, have you been ordained in some way? No, monks aren't ordained you the way priests are. You're a monk. I didn't know that. Yeah, Brother, uh, I'm not a priest. I see. And what order are you, uh, can I ask? Uh, we're a traditional Catholic Benedictine monastery. Uh, Benedictine. Okay. Well, uh, I, oh, yeah, I'm going to send for the book and uh, do a lot more reading. I certainly appreciate you taking the time to speak with me like this. Sure. It means an awful lot to me. Yeah, you can also order online. That's what I'll do. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'll do. All right. Uh, well, Brother Peter, I, I don't know what else to say at this point except thank you very, very much. Okay. It was nice talking to you. It was, it was all our pleasure, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye now.